Welcome to Grand Tactician and welcome to Worms and Warriors. We're back here with our Confederate campaign that started in 1861. We're now on August the 6th, 1862. The war's been a tough one so far. We've had a lot going on. We've been fighting a lot of battles over here in Missouri. We're kind of holding a defensive line across the Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana border. Um, and Illinois, of course, as well. So, like, this, this whole area is kind of at a standstill at the moment. Same as Virginia. But we have actually taken Washington, D.C. from the Union. Um, it's proven difficult to finish this fight. We've got the Union national morale on 44. We're sitting on 99. We need to reduce this to 25 or lower to win. We are sitting on a confederate advantage. I'd say across the board we're doing quite well, casualty-wise. I mean, almost 2-1 to one in our favour. They've won 7 battles. We've won 20. They've got more military experience, which I'm a little baffled with, but, you know, that's the way it is. Uh, Navy tonnage, they've got way more than us. Men fielded. We're sitting on 206,000. They've got 250,000. Uh, so... Our, the morale of our armies is lower. I, I, I don't know why. Our national support's lower. Again, I don't know why. It's, I think it's just kind of uh, AI cheating sort of thing with uh, this being set on very hard. So I've been thinking about the strategy and how we can get out of this, how we can finish this war, basically. Um, we've been fighting, like I say, I think we fought five or six battles at Springfield. We are going to abandon Springfield. We're going to pull back towards Fayetteville and Carrollton in Arkansas. That's going to put the onus on the Union to come and invade Arkansas, fight us on our turf, uh, and we're quite happy with that. We've just, like I say, we've just driven these three armies away here, uh, and we'll burn down these supply depots and pull out. That's what's going to happen first, so let's get those orders on the go. We'll pull back. That's Price's Corps going. Then we'll have the Western Army under Pillow. They're also going to go back. And Van Dorn's HQ as well. There we go. And while we're at it, we're going to burn down our supply depots. Don't want them coming into Union hands. The supplies from these will be redistributed where possible. So that's part one of the strategy. You might be wondering how you, like how does this make sense, but it's it's swallowing in too many people into this into this theatre. We've got forty thousand men sitting here under Van Dorn, and it's just not sustainable. Uh, he's carrying around six thousand two hundred disabled troops. 5,000 wounded, 1,250 sick. So we're going to pull back towards these hospitals, towards the supply depot. We're going to hang fire. We'll let them have this uh, corner of Missouri. It's just not worth It's not worth the hassle of fighting for it again and again. So let's see what happens here. So in this central region here, we've got two big corps. We've got Joe Johnson here with 32,000 men. We've got Hardy with the first corps with another 32,000 men. And then we've got the third corps which was that force under Cooper from the East Coast, you might remember. These are the CSA regulars. I've switched these guys around. I've promoted John Bell Hood from Colonel up to Major General, so he's got two bumps. Um, he's now got the third corps. They're going to form uh, at Hopkinsville. So that, that means from there, we're going to be able to support either corps if the Yankees start coming south. It also means that we've got a third corps in position to hold the defensive line here if these two corps want to go on the offensive. So that makes sense here, I think, for Tennessee and Kentucky with a view to pushing up towards Indianapolis and up into Illinois, potentially, to try and finish this war. Um, to back this up as well, we've got this force here, the Department of the West. This is our recruiting force. They've got another 60, I've recruited another 16,500 men. That's a substantial force. 40 guns. This is a, a decent force that's going to be assembled here. Porterfield is ready already with his brigade. We've also got the 10th Tennessee Irish Volunteers under Garnett. They're almost ready. Um, the rest of these guys I've just recruited. So we've got uh, Haygood here, 21 days for some calf, uh, 15 days, you know, 27. So it's going, to, it's going to be a little while for these other guys. 10 days, 12 days. It, it varies. Um, so somewhere between three and four weeks for most of these dudes. Uh, they're going to reinforce this third corps. And then we're going to maybe unleash Hardy and Joe Johnson on an offensive with a view to finishing the war, if we can. Uh, in the east, we've driven the Union out of Virginia. We've taken Washington, D.C. But we're kind of at a standstill. They've, they've got a lot of troops dotted around. We've got Jackson with the Second Corps, 32,500 men. Um, we've got Magruder's Third Corps with just under 20,000. And we've got Beauregard, who's going to have 31,000 with the First Corps. So that's our three corps here. And I'm also recruiting 17,000 men into the Virginia HQ. They're going to push out of here. 
and reinforce his court. They're going to reinforce mostly Magruder because Magruder's going to stay behind with the third court to keep an eye on Virginia for us while we unleash Beauregard and Thomas Jackson along with uh, Robert E. Lee, of course, who's the army commander. That's the plan. I want to see if we can capture Baltimore. I want to see if we can get this war finished. I don't, like Maybe it might not be this campaign this season because it's already August the 6th, 1862. I mean, we could do a winter campaign. We'll see how this goes. In terms of finances, it's not amazing. We're sitting on A, but what happens, happens to press play yet, so that's going to drop a little. We're still working towards propaganda, which, you know, we're still a little way off that. Um, we do have a few of these other bits and pieces available, but I'm going to leave them for now. Weapons, we've got some on order, but they're taking a long, 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 long time to get here. But anyway, first things first, we're going to abandon this area. We're going to start pressing play here. We're going to get into the campaign. I think I've talked long enough. Let's get started. It'll be interesting to see if he comes on the offensive into this area of Kentucky here, where we've got Joe Johnson sitting. We've got we've got small garrisons in these forts. They won't hold as such, but they might be able to slow down any advance down the river. Fort Pillow, 186 men. We could maybe stick somebody in here. Let's stick some guys from Kentucky in there, maybe. Kentucky has fairly low state support at 48, but I think it'll be okay for a garrison. We're going to put 1,500 men in there. Macintosh. He's still disgraced, but uh, he's fine. All right. I'm hoping for a bit more of a campaign-based episode here because I, I feel like we need a little bit of time to regroup. We need these recruits to come in. We need to reform, and we need to push north. The Union, much as it has suffered casualties here, it's still like it's still miles away from being resolved, this combat, this conflict, sorry. So we've got some troops ready in the Virginia HQ. Let's go ahead and transfer these boys out to Magruder. I'm going to stick another artillery battery into Jackson's core as well. All right. Not sure why this depot hasn't been abandoned. I keep saying burning down, but... Still there. What the hell? I don't know. It's not what I want. <laughs> oh, let's slow this down a little. Borogada destination. Weapons are delivered. What have we got here? 10,000 reboard muskets. Okay, that's a good start. Hood at destination. Van Dorn at destination. So we're pulling out of here. And that devil's gone now as well. Excellent. We are recruiting some troops down here as well, if I remember right. Yeah, Pemberton's recruiting himself uh, about 5,000 men. And depending on what the Union does, we may disperse some of these troops. Because like, if he's not going to invade Arkansas, I don't feel like we need 40,000 men here. But let's pull back here. We'll, we'll, let, we'll let these guys recover a little bit. They've done a lot of fighting this summer. Like, I, I mean a lot. Uh, just a quick note that if you've been following this series along kind of live, then there's been a, a bit less content lately because I'm just I'm so busy with work. We run our own business and I've been working uh, massive amounts of hours. Usually I work about four to six hours a day on this and we make good money. But at the moment I'm doing like about 12, 14 hours day, uh, 14 hour days. I'm making a lot of money, but it doesn't leave a lot of time for uh, YouTube videos, sadly. But I'm sure you'll appreciate that. Work must come first sometimes. Especially when you run your own business. If any of you do that, then you'll know that when the money's rolling in, you can't just not do it. But yeah, anyway, we'll get back to some regular content pretty soon. I mean, we're due a quiet period of work. Okay, so he's arrived at Hopkinsville. Why don't we... We'll make a depot here. Like a kind of secondary little depot. Since we just disbanded a bunch of them... Um, I feel like we could do with another one. And this this area here is probably a decent place for it. And he's got himself a perk. I'm going to go with Ambulance Corps. I, I pretty much always go with Ambulance Corps first. It just helps helps to shift off some of these disabled troops, uh, which like obviously means wounded and injured, not like people with disabilities. <laughs> I'm, sure you, I'm sure you know that. But. Let's take one quick look at our Navy here. What have we got going on? We've got a got a bunch of ships actually ready steamers and the like um the problem is like what, what are you going to do with those little ships beyond scouting along the rivers there's not really that much that can be done but i'm going to go ahead and i'll make a few more scouting fleets here i'll do that off camera we'll cut back in a moment all right so we've got a couple of new scouting squadrons on the way here and i'll deploy them once they're active and ready to go let's press on um Actually, we got some weapons, didn't we? Yes, we did. So let's see if we can upgrade any of these 
musket armed troops to reboard muskets. Oh, and we've issued bonds again. It's going to hit us hard here. Um, let's just go through these this army of Tennessee. Actually, no, let's not. Uh, it's the army of Northern Virginia. They've got they've got quite a lot of musket armed troops still. Let's have a quick look at these guys. Mississippi's Springfield rifles. Mississippi's. Well, maybe they haven't. Reboard muskets. Yeah, they're fine. Mississippi Springfield rifle muskets. Mixed muskets for Wooford. Okay, let's get him some better weapons. We've got a, about 5,700 Springfield rifles. I'm going to save them for now, though. We'll, go, we'll roll with giving out some of these uh, reboard muskets. They're absolutely fine. I mean, they're not amazing, but they'll do the job. Hall rifle, Mississippi. Okay. Oops, six pound, I feel good. We've got 24 pound howitzers. Uh, we've got a bunch of Williams guns on order. Oh, 8.4 days for 32 of them. They're kind of close range machine gun almost kind of things. They don't have much in the way of artillery. Let's give out these 24 pounders to these guys. All right. So that's everyone in Beauregard's core, at least armed with some form of rifle. Even if they are just reboard muskets. But, you know, oh, so they're Withers, Springfields, muskets. Let's remember Withers, we'll go back to him. Oh, it's quite a lot. The way I like to set most of my. Corp is like we, we like. I like to have three infantry brigades, a cav uh, divisions, a cavalry division, which I mean it's been tiny in these, uh, and then an artillery division. The infantry divisions. Sometimes I'll put artillery in with them. Sometimes I won't. But our artillery weapons are a little bit lacking at the moment. So with us, let's go ahead and get them some better weapons. They're good troops. They're quite experienced. Oh, I've only got one star, but um, our support in Virginia's up to seventy. That's good news. Let's give them Springfield rifle muskets. Look at these guys, Springfield's rifles as well. Reigns, Springfield Musket, Smith as Mississippi's okay. We've got more Mississippi's on order, but they're going to be a while still. Uh, 61 more days. Reboard muskets it is. Mm, lots of Springfield rifle uh, muskets. So these 10,000 reboards didn't go very far at all. <laughs> but, I mean, at least we've increased some of our guys' stuff. Uh, that's it, actually. We've got no more. 1,800. So the majority of Magruder's core is armed with Springfield muskets, and that's not good. But well, it is what it is. I do think we might have enough for Brian here. He's only got 1,021 men, so we should have enough to give those guys reboards. Yeah, we have, just about. All right, well, there we are then. That's as good as it's going to get here for the moment. How about we place another order for reboards? Let's see how long they're going to take. I think, like, with this new update, they're going to take a long time. Um, 41 days for all these cavalry weapons as well. That'll be nice to get some better cavalry weapons in. Can't order any of these. Planes, rifles, 3,000 are going to take 141 days. This is with the new update. It's far too long. So to order a thousand of those is nearly a year, ten thousand of those is nearly a year, and that's that's ridiculous. However, if we were to order Mississippi rifles, because the standardization is up to twenty eight, that would only take sixty one days. That's that's a substantial difference. Uh, or is that how long they're going to be? Oh, that's because we've got some on order, right? I see. Okay. Okay, well, 61 days for 10,000 Mississippis to arrive. 258 days, that's ridiculous. Even if we're just going to order 3,000 planes rifles, it's going to cost us 1.7 million and take 141 days. How does that make any sense? 93 days to order 10,000 more reboards at a cost of 4.1 million. That sucks. Okay, we're not going to bother ordering any of those then. Um, we do have 13,000 Springfield muskets, so at least some of these new guys who are coming through would be able to upgrade from the mixed muskets. Let's speed things up a little and see what happens here. That's Price and Pillow back in Arkansas.
I'm wondering if we can get a ship up here. I don't think so. Is this not a navigable river? It looks like it should be. No, I guess not. Okay, well that sucks. Uh, Union recruits offered bounties, so they are really pushing for recruits here. Pillows boys are recovering their readiness. Price is already ready again. Sue Uprising, okay. Our 32 Williams guns have arrived. Williams guns are fairly decent for close range support. So the intelligence indicates he's mostly defending his own lands. We are quite content with that at the moment, if I'm being perfectly honest here. A nice bit of time's elapsed, so we're at the 25th of August here. The Department of the West has formed up quite nicely here. Let's see, let's see if we can get any of these weapons upgraded. Because they've all got mixed muskets. And while Springfield rifles, uh, Springfield muskets are not much better than the mixed muskets, they are better. Looks like just this one brigade here, Winston's brigade. Won't get Springfields. We've got nothing else to give them either. Okay, so that's one brigade there. That's not going to have decent weapons. Um, so, Hood's Corps. Let's get an extra infantry division in here. I'm going to put that division under green. We're going to replace green with someone else. Got decent stats. I mean, not amazing, but decent. Um, yeah, so let's get some guys in here. Just going to take Hood's corp to 16,200 16, men, and that's fine. I'm going to stick uh, the 10th Irish Volunteers, the 10th Tennessee Irish Volunteers, into Jenkins' division. In Joe Johnson's corp. That's going to then take him up to 35,000 men. These two other brigades are going to go into uh, Hardy's corp with a new division. I'm going to put them under Robert Rhodes. Hardy's call is really big now. <laughs> but uh, that's okay. Okay. Excellent. Let these guys get in position. We're going to launch an offensive here into Maryland. The goal being Baltimore. I'm going to abandon the Cumberland Depot. We don't need that. Lee's offensive, 8062. I'm going to reposition this HQ to Nashville. Unknown units, 53,000 men total. Well, actually, much more, 60,000 60, men against... We, well, we've slightly got the numbers on him. We've got 139 gun. He's got 159 these boys are under McCall. Six hours for the Army of North Virginia. That's the HQ. So hopefully we should start with both our troops on the field. Let's get into this battle. The Army of New Jersey. Okay. Should be interesting. Battle of Baltimore. Okay. So I'm surprised to see it's a defensive scenario, but I'm happy with that. It's a... It looks like a grim battlefield. Lots of woods. That's not ideal. The Union's coming in from up here, it looks like. Oak Grove Post Office kind of area. Yeah, I think that's the only oh, the entry point here as well. At Bladen, Bladensburg Road, maybe? I can't quite see it. Okay, and it also looks like... Oh, no, we've got both corps. I'm just going to see if we've got the one core, but that's fine. So I'm going to go ahead and set these guys up, and we'll cut back in. Okay, so we've gone with a pretty solid defensive line here. Breastworks and parapets covering this crossing, and I really don't know where the enemy's going to come from. I, I suspect they might push over these two forts, so I've got Hills, AP Hills Division here. 11,000 men guarding this first crossing, and then we've got McCown, McCown's Division on this far fort, Ford. I can't speak today. <laughs> uh, but we can manoeuvre these guys. There's roads all over the place, so let's get started. We've got Hampton's division here in reserve. Yule's division on the left. We can redeploy if we need to. Let's see how this goes. Let's see where he comes from. Let's see what's happening. 
as always, it was quite difficult to position our artillery to get decent fire because of the forests and woods. I'm assuming he's going to ignore this completely and push for one of these crossings, in which case we will move more troops across to contest these crossings. I don't want to commit too many men just now to do that, but it's certainly an option. I'm just going to move uh, Canty's cavalry division down here. Maybe we'll send some scouts out to see what's going on. No sign of movement, no dust kicked up. But then I guess if they're on this main road coming down, we wouldn't be able to see that. Get the scouts out. I mean, let's just send them forward a bit and see if we can see anything. Well, here they are over here. Surely they're not going to try and just walk around our flank. That would be pretty annoying. <laughs> I sent Stuart's cavalry division. It's only one brigade, but, you know, anything's better than nothing. Our artillery's opened up on him. It would be just typical that they would march around our defences. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to actually reposition Ewell's division up here. Just in case. No sign of any other troops just yet. Our scouts are out. Oh yeah, so he is seriously he's walking around our flank here. I mean, oh. it's so stupid that the AI can see where your barricades are. Go ahead and give out long-range orders for everyone. More cavalry there. We just spotted them with the skirmishers. The Baton Rouge boys here under Richard Taylor, it's a viewer unit. Going to cover our left flank. Here's anything else going on, let's have a look. Canty has not spotted anybody just yet. I don't want to send too far, we'll send to this little branch in the road. Looks like maybe this is where he's pushing his attack. Skirmishing has started. We've got Mississippi rifles, nice long range on those. And of course, uh, vice versa, if, if we're not under attack on this right flank, we'll move these two divisions across, or at least some of them. Possibly just a brigade on each of these crossings, just in case. So we've got 72,000 in the field now. It's going to be a nice big fight here. Fairly even numbers. Nice bit of target practice here for our skirmishers. Casualties inflicted on that artillery battery. Here they come. Let's slow this down. Oh, they've actually crossed the river here. What the? That's not good. I've noticed the AI has been a lot more aggressive when pushing towards your artillery units that are on the front with his cavalry. Which, I mean, makes sense, but it's, it's not good. Not good for us. 
some really experienced troops here. We've driven them back. Nice. Look at their casualties. Jeez. Edward Johnson's brigade uh, doing a good job here. Loring also really experienced. Ooh. Home skirmishes are a bit cut off, that's why I'm pulling them back. We do have movement over here, but I think they are moving across this way, so possibly we're going to be all right over here. I'm going to... Let's detach... One of these brigades, and we're going to leave just one brigade here. Or oh, is that too much of a risk? Maybe. <laughs> Can move Hugey over this way. McLaws as well. Uh, let's get Iverson on the road over there. Jackson a little closer as well. Skirmisher screen doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing, slowing those guys down. They're crossing this crossing up here. Okay, that's interesting. See if we can hit this cavalry in the flank with Hayes' cavalry. See if we can send these Union guys running. <clears throat> A lot of artillery fire hitting into this unit, 2nd Brigade. A bit difficult control on this far left because of the camera angle. Hayes is in range, he's opening fire. up a little bit. Ah, they're broken as well. Another second brigade. Okay, nice. He is bringing a fair amount of troops across, so he's definitely going to push over here. That's where the main assault is coming from. I'm going to move McCown's brigade, uh, division over to reinforce this flank. Gonna leave just one brigade covering the far forward, but I feel like that's okay. Hill, I may also move out.
We're still sitting on a minor defeat, but I, I'm feeling fairly confident with this. Yes, routed, excellent. Now, if this was any other game, I would obviously charge these guys down, but it just doesn't work out in this. It does not. Let's have a quick look at the casualties, see what's happening here. 1,700 for him, 285 for us. Early days yet, though. It really looks like he's pushing everything at this. Okay, so with us is detached. Let's move the rest of these boys over. AP Hills Division coming over here. That's uh, the 7th South Carolina Volunteers under uh, Elkanar B. Greer. That's actually Brahms' unit. We've also got these guys here, the 1st CSA Marines, another viewer unit. Oh, skirmishers are still holding them back. Quite contentious, let that go on. You know, Jones is almost done here. We'll pull him back. See if he can get out there before he breaks. I think he's done it. Just about. Walton skirmishes out. So the AI is still massing up their troops here, ready for their actual real attack, which should be coming soon. Where are these guys going? The first cavalry. Hopefully not down here. Richard Taylor's Baton Rouge boys skirmishes out. Hope you get boys. Harry Hayes is moving up to give these guys some flank and fire. Really sure where they're going, surely they can't cross this.
Take a lot of punishment. Excellent, driven those boys back. Oh, here comes some cavalry. Now swung around to a minor victory. 3,000 casualties for them, 700 nod for us. Is with what? Why have they withdrawn? What the hell? Right, well, I don't understand why that happened. Strange battle. Very piecemeal attack by the AI. I hope it's not a mistake leaving this unguarded. casualties for homes actually switch him out Stephen D Lee in there Any time you like now. Routed. It's the first battle. These boys just offer a stroll in front of our defensive line, as you do. Oh, more cavalry running. Here comes some infantry, though.
Right, here they go. Where are they going? Rosecrans Brigade. More troops behind. Forward on our centre. Wolf, it's doing all right here. Three brigades of infantry at least coming up on our right flank here. However, where are they going, what they're doing, I don't know. Yeah, so they've got iron discipline two now. We can tell it by the two little dots there just above the flag. Excellent. Uh, Henry Heath's brigade doing a nice job excellent work Intense fire fight going on here, the artillery non stop pounding. Bonham, highly experienced as well, old hand. <laughs> Racking up quite a few casualties here, which is a bit of a problem. But you don't win battles without losing men. Oh, here's some uh, infantry. Uh, looks like a whole di division up on our left flank. Smith's boys over here to help out.
Protectors might actually go into day two unless he withdraws. Taking a bit of counter battery fire. How's he broken? No casualties. What the hell? That's from AP Hills Division. Why are they unstable? No casualties. What? Why is it doing that? From fatigue? I can't be breaking from fatigue, surely. High fatigue. Uh, okay. That is disappointing. Get these CSA Marines out of there. Pull back, boys. On your bit. Skirm's out. Oh, here comes another assault. Through these cornfields. Hitting Wolfhead's red coats. Move the Williams guns up to the line, see if they can be any help. Did you not feel like maybe turn and then giving some fire? Don't you go anywhere. You just stay there. I want to slow this down. Give them iron discipline. A long, hard fight.
They've got no guns. What what's going on here? Where Where are your guns? This is Oh shit. This is what I'd feared. Okay. Can Withers hold this by himself? I don't think so. I'm gonna have to send somebody else back here. Reigns with his 3,000 men bombing back towards this bridge. Argyle Mill. Looks like it's going to be a decent fight there. The Williams guns in place. Firing away. Smith in contact, that's on our left. I need Holmes out of there. Smith in. That's the Williams guns going bump, bump, bump. Focus and low on ammunition. Okay, well. Almost broken as well. not pressed the attack here yet. That's a small little grace, but there are one, two, three, four. At least four brigades of infantry, five brigades, six brigades, and some artillery. Okay, I've made a mistake here. I've underestimated what he's going to do with his troops. Almost out of ammunition with the Williams guns, but I mean they should be giving these boys a real pacing. Baton Rouge boys in fire as well. Holmes is pulled back, nice. Smith is in combat. Open there, crossing the crossing the river here. And they're broken. Excellent. Skirmishes out. Let's see if we can hit these guns. A lot to keep an eye on here. Williams guns are 
pretty much out of ammunition, but they're still firing, so we'll leave them be. Oh, Baton Rouge boys, why are you... Why are you nervous? You only lost 200 men. Relax. Huge across here just in case those Baton Rouge boys are going to break. I hope they're not. Come on, Richard Taylor, keep it together. It's almost out of ammunition. Oh, routed. So that's the thing, like, because it's set on very hard, so I mean, you really need to lose any resilience really before your boys start running, which is a real problem since they can, they've lost 800 men and aren't even running yet. I mean, they're, they are flashing, but you know, Baton Rouge boys lost 278 men and are fleeing. Press this attack over here, that's good for us. McCown has come back there, so is Canty with his cavalry. On with Maynard, so he should be decent for the defence here. He's still sort of struggling to get his men in line ready for an attack, but they are definitely coming. stretching on a little bit but I feel I've quite enjoyed it to be honest uh, it's, it's been pretty good he's definitely pushing for an attack on our left flank here so Hughie's on the march but <sighs> using the road here suffering a few casualties on the way almost 17.30 hours, so coming up for evening. He's crossed here with some guns. Guns none. Alright, well I'm not sure what's going on here. So if this goes into day two, we'll build a little bit of uh, defences over here. I'm going to pull Holmes back now that Hugh G's arrived with his 2,900 guys. Help him plug that gap. Oh, Armour Springfield muskets though, which sucks. Also low ammunition for Ramsier. 
Again, not ideal. Come on, Jubal Early, drive off these guns. I think it's focusing out there, but I feel if he withdraws, he's probably going to end up suffering some casualties and breaking. Um, we're putting Grien in place here to give some extra support fire, and then maybe I'll be able to pull him out. Uh, I don't know what's happened to James' guns. He's, they're just gone. I don't know where he's left them. Oh, over there. Jesus. Right in the middle of the woods. Let's send him back to see if we can pick them up. It might even be fortuitous if we can move him here. So he's he's struggling with his terrain here. The Williams guns are still blaring, even though it says low ammunition. I don't know if they're having any effect whatsoever, but we'll keep them there while they're, while they're still firing. These boys just seem stuck here. Uh, we're not giving fire, or are we? Hard to say. Doesn't look like it, we're just ignoring them. Idle. Still fighting here as evening is rolling in. It's 1800 hours almost. A lot of troops building up on our left flank. Still got plenty of troops in reserve that haven't even fought yet. Alexander's brigade here, McLaws, Anderson. I mean, that's fine. I'm happy to keep them fresh for tomorrow morning. Now, See if we can't pull him out of here. Again, these unbeatable Union Brigades, 1,100 casualties, it's 50% casualties, and they're not bothered. We have driven those guns away, nice. Let's see if we can cause some havoc for them in the rear. Why are they... Why are these guys here? Why are they facing the wrong way? These are all infantry detachments attached to guns or half attached to them. Bizarre. Yeah, the Baton Rouge boys have reformed at least. Low on shells, yeah, we're running out of ammunition. Fulkerson's broken before. Oh! Where have they come from? Where have they come from? Surely they can't cross here. What's going on here? How many brigades are there? It 
it's things like this that uh, really ruin this game for me. I mean, where where did he come from? And nobody noticed him just sneaking up past us. And this as well, as soon as you start pulling troops back, they break all the time. As if that would even happen. But this is an absolute joke. And so is this. Okay. Well, there they go. Joke. He's got his guns back now, at least. Let's put them over here, see if we can get a shot off. With his 12 pound field guns. Give him a mayor post, a few other guys. They're going to push another attack in here, it looks like. Not successful. I think I'm pulling out. I figured I might as well open up some fire with this cavalry. <laughs> Very strange fight, but strangely been also enjoyable. Let's see if I can throw these boys back. It's in Huga Ford. Huga? Yuji. Hopefully we'll at least capture some decent rifles here. Always welcome. What is what is he doing? So it looks like we are peppering these guys. They're actually running and fleeing. Nice. And Hughie sent him running. Excellent. I suspect they're going to call it at 2100. Yeah, they pulled out. Major victory. Almost 20,000 casualties for him. 4,300 for us. 85 guns. So that was an important win, pushing up here towards Baltimore. Pretty much a disaster for the Union in the East here. 17,000 casualties is outrageous. 1.45% drop of national morale. That's a good one. I mean, 4,000 casualties is not easy for us either, but, you know, that's it's sustainable. 17,000. All right, so we've captured almost 9,000 rifles and 40 guns. Let's see if that's anything good. Uh, we had a... Oh, we've got POW camps built now as well. Excellent. So we didn't have to parole the prisoners. That's awesome. So let's just get this going. We'll leave it on paused. Um, that was a nice win here. Where are they going to pull out to? I mean, I'm presuming they're going to stay in the vicinity. But that was a decent win. That was that was nice. They've got fresh armies up in the north. But, I mean, we didn't suffer huge casualties, so we're definitely in a position where we can fight again. Uh, let's have a quick look at the weapons. I am aware the episode's getting quite long, so we'll be calling it a day after we've had a quick look here, see what we've got. Oh, we've got a few parrots. Uh... Six thousand, six and a half thousand Springfield rifles. That's excellent. Hmm. Eh. Nothing too exciting. Did we capture anything? Hardly even any Napoleons. Did they mostly have six pounders? I mean, that's outrageous. Hmm. 
Yeah, well, okay. It could be worse. That was pretty good. So we're marching on Baltimore, and we'll continue to do so in the next episode. I do hope you enjoyed this one. I hope you liked that battle. That was a pretty good one uh, as far as battles go in this game. If you did like it, then please leave a comment. Let me know what you thought of it. Leave a like on the video. If you like this sort of content, why not come and check out the channel and subscribe? We're doing quite a lot of uh, Civil War content on here. We've got Ultimate General going on and, of course, Grand Tactician. Either way, I hope you're having a great day, whatever you're doing. And I'll see you in the next one. Turn off for now.